Hey everybody, welcome back to War Buddies. Today, as you probably guessed with the thumbnail, we are painting Orgoth. Specifically, we're painting an Orgoth Light Warjack. This is the Jackal with his spear and shield. And I've been doing this sort of a reddish metallic paint scheme for my Orgoth of late, and people have asked me how it's done. So I have good news for you. It is very, very simple and does not require a whole lot of technique or that many paints. So I'm just gonna show you real quick on this Jackal. First off, where we are here at the beginning, he has already been based. That is a piece of pine bark that has been cut down and glued into place. And it was just painted a light gray and then washed with greens and browns to give it sort of a natural look. And then he has been pinned through both feet, I believe, all the way through just to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Now the main thing we're going to do, we're going to do his armor first. So it's going to be a series of paints that are going to bring this armor up to some red shades uh, before we do any sort of details. Because once we have those red shades up, we're going to wash the entire model in ink. And that's what's going to give us that cool, muddy brown type look. So first off, just as a reminder, we are using Citadel colors for this project. So far he has been base coated entirely in Rhinox Hide. He was previously primed in black which is just how I start all my models. I know that's not always the best idea, but you came here for the entertainment and not the good advice. We're gonna start off with some Doom Bull Brown. This is more of a reddish brown. It's red, I don't know, terracotta type color. And we're just gonna shake that up real quick. As you can tell from the very high class of brush I'm using, I don't really care about my brushes too much, and especially in this case, because we're going to be doing a lot of overbrushing. We're not gonna be doing much dry brushing, and here's why. We have, four or five colors to go through in order to get him where we want him. And if we try to dry brush everything with very little moisture in the brush, you're gonna get this grainy texture over everything, just as the, as the uh, pigments and particles start to build up. So when we do these layers, you don't want your brush super wet because we're not base coating them, but we also don't wanna to try to dry brush it. So try to get my equipment set up. I don't do painting tutorials often, so this is either a treat or a disaster, depending on how you look at it. So just kind of, I just kind of wick off the excess there. Try, try not to knock over my camera here. And all we're gonna do with this is we're gonna overbrush the entire model fairly thoroughly. So just back and forth motions like so. What we want is the Rhinox hide. We want to keep, it's a little bit too, more, too much moisture on the brush. The Rhinox hide we want to keep in the recesses. The Doom Bowl Brown is going to be on the outside. And as you can see, there's nothing scientific about this. I would argue that the more chaotic and rough it looks, the better the final effect is gonna be because metal does not wear in neat predictable patterns. And that's essentially what we're doing right here is we're just wearing metal up from dark to light. I'm also gonna to try to keep my eye on the camera so it don't stray out of view. But if I do happen to stray out of view, just yell at your TV or your computer and I will not hear you, you will just look silly. And we're essentially going to do this over the entire model. I love his little tail, his little dinosaur tail. I don't know if that's for counterbalance, for intimidation or what, but this model has a dinosaur tail and I love it. Since I did the base earlier, we're gonna be a little careful when we get down to his feet, just so that I don't have to repaint anything on the base. And now we're pretty happy with the coverage. Our model has been thoroughly painted. You can still see the recesses are definitely still the dark brown, but we started to come up and the overall model is now a very nice reddish kind of an earthy brown. A few areas I've left off that I know I'll be doing in silver or a different color. His toes I'll be doing in silver. I know his fingers I'll be doing in silver. The blade would need to do something a little bit different. We'll talk about here in a bit, a little buzz saws. You can just sort of identify which areas you want to do in different colors. The intent of this is to supply sort of a colored canvas. So we're gonna do the whole model like this and then move on to details from there. Our next step, we're going to take corn red, we're moving away from the brown, back up into the red tones. And we're going to do essentially the same trick, just less of it. And that's gonna be the same thing I'll repeat here several times. So whereas we're covering the entire model with this, with the Doom Bowl Brown. The corn red, give me a second to get some on the brush. 
I do not have a second camera for my palette, so you just have to take my word for it. There we go. Make sure we're not slathered up in moisture here. And we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna hit it a little bit more, a little bit lighter. We're gonna aim mostly for the highlights, like so. And I'm gonna warn you, there's a time when you're doing this process where you're gonna look at the model and say, this is too red. And that's okay, I did the same thing when I started this. Once we hit it with the ink wash at the end, the ink wash is a brown ink, so it will bring all the tones back down into the brown scale, but it's going to preserve the highlights. So really what we're doing here is just a long process of highlighting this model. And we're just gonna give them a good overall in red, leave plenty of the doom bull still there, so we'll, st we'll still see the dark brown, the recesses. We still have the doom bull brown there, and then the highlights are starting to turn corn red. There we are with the corn red. As mentioned before, it's okay to be a little rough, be a little slapdash with it. That's sort of the idea. Now, since corn red and doom bull brown are very similar to each other, very similar tones, it's kind of hard to see what we've done there, but we're creating a gradient all the way from dark to light here using a series of paints. The next paint we're gonna be using is Evil Sun Scarlet, and this is where it's gonna to start to get obnoxiously red. And that's good. Again, it's going to be redder here than the final product. So when you're adding this Evil Sun Scarlet, it is a much brighter red than the corn red is. And you want to stick mostly to the highlights and edges. We don't want to be slathering it over the entire armor surface now. So we're going to come in here and just brush it on. We're still being pretty rough. We still don't want it to be super neat. If you wanted a neater design, you could go in and just edge highlight it, but I try not to do that to myself. You just really want to catch those edges. And it should just give you a good, brighter overall effect. Again, focusing on those, focusing on those lines, it's gonna help to define the shape of the armor plates once we start to uh, wash everything down. Make sure the camera can see that, that's good. Again, very, very light motions. We're trying not to dry brush too much because, again, you get that powderized look to it. There's a decent amount of paint on the brush. I'm just very, very gently touching it to the model. Now, I like to put a lot of the, the glow effect, let's say the glow effect, a lot, a lot of this build up around the face area because that does need to be a focus. This process shouldn't take you too long, but by the end of it, you should have a pretty well highlighted model and definitely one you can look at and say that is definitely red and no longer brown. There we go. The model is now to the point where it's starting to bother me with how much it's starting to look a little cartoonishy red. The edge highlights are in there, as you can see. We can still see all the paints that we've used if we look very, very closely, but everything's starting to build into this very fine gradient along the edges. Speaking of edges, our final paint for this round is going to be Troll Slayer Orange. This is going to be reserved for the very, very edges. Use a gentle touch here. If you want to draw attention or focus, or really exaggerate one specific part of the model, this is the time to do it. Because this should still be a fairly clearly defined color even once we get the ink on. So we're just gonna very gently brush here and keep it focused around the head. On the eyes there. I don't even know if you can see this on camera. Just a very gentle touch here and there. Not overall, just kind of where I think it's it might be needed. So we get the, the raised arm, we want to put some focus on that. So brush a little orange there, a little bit here, a little on the weapon. Again, it's very gentle, which is funny considering the subject matter. Good. It's really tough to tell when you're done with steps like, with steps like this. You're just kind of done when you, you think you're done, when you think you're, 
you're ready to move on or when you can't just uh, can't stand looking at it anymore. Do a little bit back here. A little bit there. Troll Slayer Orange is not a very rich color, in my opinion. So it may take a few swipes for it to really show up. Just like right along that armor plate right there. That's what we're looking for. Do the same thing on this side, orange. I'm not gonna cut away on this one because it is a very short step. Flesh out this a little bit. These spires. I always like to put a little extra attention on these spires up here, these little claw-like things, just because they look cool. Okay, as a brush brush will run out of paint, finish a few quick swipes here and there, and that is about it. So, if all you're doing is the red armor, you can actually go ahead and wash this as it is. But we are doing a bit more than that. We have metal to add first. I do recommend adding the metal before you wash it in ink, because I've made that mistake with some of the other models, and then you have to go back and not just add the metal, but then you have to rewash just the metal bits, and it's kind of a pain. And we don't need that negativity in our lives. So. Our metal color is going to be simple coat of iron breaker. Nothing complicated about this one. It is a silver, it's a good metallic. Citadel colors make, make pretty good metallics. So we're gonna come in, we've got these buzz saws on his shield, and we're just gonna paint over those. I'm being really careful right now, and that's just because I know I'm on camera, otherwise I'll be a little more reckless with it. The other thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this optional because some of you guys are gonna hear this and be like, no, thank you. There is, on the Orgoth Jacks, they are covered in rivets. They have all these tiny little rivets everywhere, which is a detail that I love and I applaud whatever sculptor had to go in and make all these little rivet dots everywhere. For effect, and because it looks cool, we're gonna take some of the silver and just dab it on. Just like so. And we're gonna do that on every stinking rivet we can find. If you lose patience with it, just go back to doing something else for a minute, like the work on the bus saw a little bit. Reload your brush. Once you get into the rhythm of it, it does not take long, but I assure you the adds so much to the end effect to have all these little spots visible. So you can put on your favorite music, binge a series, some War Buddies battle reports. There's also these flathead screws everywhere, which I think is interesting. I usually like to try to get those as well. Just a little metal touches. The Orgoth, I imagine at least, very, not very high on the skilled craftsmanship when it comes to the aesthetics. They're the kind of people that just bolt, rivet stuff together, throw it into combat. That seems to be their kind of style, in my opinion, at least. And that was sort of the idea I had in mind when I created this color scheme. A little bit more there. So for this part, I am gonna turn the camera off because I'm actually holding this quite a, far, quite a ways away from my face so that the camera can see it. And that's making me nervous. So if you happen to spill over with any of the silver, just go in with a few of the, uh, a few of the lower colors. So. You can rub over it with some Rhinox Hide, add some Doom Bull Brown, we'll make a little corn red or whatever, just to blend it with the rest of them. But I'm gonna finish this. We're gonna do the buzz saws, the rivets. Uh, we'll do this claw here. We'll do his toes as well in metal. And these little rings that are down here. I know the Tyrant Warjack had a lot more rings hanging on to him, so yeah, we got some rings here and there. We'll go and tag those as well with silver, and we'll be back shortly. All right, so our silver is done. Or if you skipped ahead in the video because you one didn't want to do all those rivets, I don't blame you. It's quite a few, but it's kind of therapeutic and calming and very satisfying once you get them all done. It's honestly, right now, it looks pretty good to go if you wanted sort of a clean, smooth type of paint job. It actually reminds me, it's got the ruddy red-brown and the silver dots. It reminds me of an illustration of studded leather armor from a certain role-playing game. 
But this is War Buddies, we do dark and gritty stuff, so we're gonna take this and make it dark and gritty. And we're gonna do that with my favorite paint of all time, Agrax Earthshade. Few rules about this if you haven't previously used it. We're gonna get one of our big brushes. Shake it up thoroughly before you start using it. This is a shade, so it's not really a paint, it's more of a, it's got a texture very similar to water, really. And we're just gonna, we're going to shade the entire model, except for the base, because I already got that. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take all, all the tones, it's gonna darken them and bring them more towards brown. Make sure you get the normal stuff, not the gloss stuff, although that would be kind of a cool look. So if you try this with the gloss, Agrax Earthshade, do let me know how that turns out. But once you go to use it, you just load up your brush. We're gonna put it on, you don't wanna let it pool up and just stay there, because what'll happen is it'll dry, and you'll get these little spots of this white, chalky nonsense that's kind of no fun at all. So, just gonna lather up a bunch of the brush, put a little bit on the palette, just so I'm not dumping it everywhere. And we're gonna start with the shield here. And we're just gonna come in and just cover this thing. Metal, everything, and just keep pushing around with your brush. Make sure it gets in all the crevices and all that. If too much of it pulls up somewhere, then we'll, we can go with a brush and draw it out here in a second. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we got a lot there in, in those crevices, so I'll just wipe my brush off and just push the bristle, bristles in there and they just kind of drink up the paint. You do want to kind of work kind of quick because if you wait till the paint's dry or till the ink is dry, then it gets a lot harder to work with. So this is the part where I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna finish doing the rest of this model because this is gonna take a little bit of focus and I gotta work kind of quick. Yeah, it's mostly dry at the moment. It's still kind of dry and you can see the glossy areas, but we are dropping this model down to a nice matte, kind of a brown shade. While that's going on, we're gonna go ahead and do the cloth. They have this little loincloth type thing. He's also got this stuff wrapped around his spear. And I wanna do that in sort of a contrasting color. So we're gonna do this in purple because we've done a red-orange scheme for basically the whole model. Let's start off with some Nagaroth Knight. Free to do this while the, while the Agrax Earthshade is drying because we're not going to be dealing with the same parts of the model that are in ink. Words, words are hard. All right, it's kind of a hard one to get on camera, but we're just gonna come in here. Nagaroth Knight is a base paint from the Citadel color line, which means it covers very well. And just a couple of little thin coats. Should bring this down to a nice deep purple. And then don't forget to flip the model around and get the other side as well. Kind of interesting little detail. Like the entire model is all riveted metal and beaten iron and just a lot of anger and discontent. And then we get this little bit of cloth here, so. Making it sort of a sort of a royal color just amuses me. And our Nagaroth Knight is there and looking quite smooth. Had a bit of a change of heart on the spear. Decided to go with a, uh, where is it? Xandri Dust instead, which I'll shade with more Agrax here in a little bit once it's dry. While that's drying though, for the cloth, the purple cloth, we're going to move into a Venetian purple. It is a lighter shade than our Nagaroth Knight. And if this were a large piece of cloth, this would be a bit more in depth, but as it is, we're gonna do essentially what we did with the Doom Bowl Brown on top of the Rhinox Hide. Turn turn so you guys can see. And we're just gonna paint over the thing, avoiding the recesses. Just giving it a little bit of depth, a little bit of texture there. Making it a little bit richer. No specific reason why we're using three different shades of purple. That's just, I like to do my gradients and things in threes. So usually one color for the, for the base coat, one layer to bring it up, and then something to highlight. Speaking of highlights, and that's really all the step it is. Highlights are gonna be in Jean Steeler Purple, which is a layer paint, so it's a little bit thinner. And this is just gonna be on highlights and edges. And the main function of this, honestly, is to help make it pop against the dull, so far dull, 
shades we've done so far. So just kind of follow the curve there, make it a little more visually striking, like so. And then same on the back. Just going along the edges and some of the raised areas where the cloth would be catching some light. There we go. Perfect. I may cover some of that with weathering. We'll see how I feel when we get to that part of the project. And we're back on that commercial break. We uh, put some Agrax Earthshade on the Xandri dust so that'll dry to a nice little brown shade. And overall, our model's starting to look pretty good if I don't say so myself. Now one of the touches I want to give, and this is entirely optional to you guys, is because they are seagoing raiders and they're infernal cultists and all that kind of stuff and just generally fun people to be around and have at parties, I like to do these little like war paint runes on there to also break up there's not a whole lot of detail going on with the armor so far. We have to add in our glow, but we're not there yet. So what I like to do is we get some uh, administratum gray, not a white. Some of the whites I use get really chalky. I haven't really found a good white that I enjoy. I'm just gonna, well, before I paint, let's pause there for a second, strategize, and pick out a few spots of the model where it looked like the whoever the war caster is who's in charge of this would have come up in daubed some paint on them in these really rough sorts of ways. So one of my favorite places to go for that is the left eye. I usually like to do like a slash or two slashes down. Shoulder pads, anything that's leaning towards the viewer as if, they're, as if the warjack is presenting it. So we'll probably do something over the eye. We'll do maybe something on this shoulder pad right about here. You don't want it to gel too much with the model because it needs to look like something was its it doesn't follow all the curves is what I'm getting at. It should look like something that was done after the fact. It's not part of the warjack. And you also don't want to keep your brush too clean to be too crisp about this because this is Orgoth and presumably they are not expert painters. Not like Thagrosh, painter of Everblight. So we're just going to come in here a little bit. This is going to be kind of difficult because it's leaning forwards as much as I can. And we're just going to very gently do a little line there. Do a, do a couple of times. Get most of the paint off the brush. You can almost dab it more than you are brushing. Are you able to see that? I'm trying to just here we are. Things like that. It's little touches. It breaks up the monotony of the armor color. So we're going to come in here, get a bit more. And for this armor piece over here, we're going to do a sort of a serpentine, serpentine thing. Around like that. You know, try to get it all in one shot. It's okay to make it look kind of rough. You need to put line through it. It's like that. So we're going to do a couple of those and bring the model closer to my eyes so I can see what I'm doing. But that's the kind of thing. We're going to do these really, real rough war paints right here, here. Maybe on this leg, kind of asymmetric, so put some up here, some down here. I'm not going to overdo it, just a little note here and there, and we'll be right back. 
All right, and there we go with that. We've added in just a little bit here. We got a little trident thing, strengthened a little bit. We got some over the eye, a little doodad down here. A little on the leg, just little touches here and there. And armor-wise, that is the end of the model. So the next thing we're going to do, the last thing we're going to do, I suppose, is going to be the glow effect. So we've got a lot of opportunities to glow. I mean, these things are possessed of animal spirits and running off steam power or magic or whatnot or whatever. So when it comes to war jacks, I like to give them uh, sort of a glow effect. Now, I don't really know what these things are supposed to be on the model, but this is usually where I put the glow on Orgoth models. They've got these little bisected circles all over the place on their boiler. I assume that's their boiler. Probably a bad assumption. Whatever it is on their backpack, on their shoulders. But anywhere that it looks like I might be able to see into the model, there's going to be some glow effect. So we're going to do here, here, here on the shield, both here and in these little vents. That'd be a nice little thing to do. On the backpack, and these little ribs, how well you can see them, these little ribs that run along the side of the torso. You see those in the Tyrant Warjack as well. Those look really good if you do them in a glow. The eyes, I always do the eyes in a glow because that's fun. And I'm actually going to do his sword blade. The reason it's still unpainted is I want to do the glow effect there too because he doesn't have a whole lot of light happening with him. So we are going to fix that. We're going to fix that with another three gradient layer or three layer gradient, however you want to look at it. Of Evil Stone Scarlet, followed by Troll Slayer Orange, followed by Flash Kids Yellow. More of a mixture between Flash Kids Yellow and Troll Slayer Orange. Flash Kids Yellow, in my opinion, has a slightly green tint to it, or I might just be crazy. So, very simple process here, especially because most of these are sunken in. We don't have to worry about dry brushing anything now. Get yourself a detail brush. And all we're going to do is come in here, make sure that's on camera. And we're going to fill this in. And part of why we're doing this is because the model is very, it's, it's a very dark model right now. So we're going to add these little splashes of vibrant colors, sort of like we did with the purple, just to make things stand out, give a little personality here. First step is all we're going to do. We're just essentially going to fill these little inset areas with Evil Sun Scarlet. It may take two coats just to get it looking good. That's fine. Don't get too worried about it because we do have two more paints to go. And there we go. We got our reds in place and they really do start to pop out against the dull red metal there. We got the boilers done. A lot of little work here on the shield. Did the whole blade of the thing. We're going to do a little bit of a glow effect here. So I went ahead and went over the metal a little bit just to make it all. It's like a like an iron he just yanked out of the fire and he's about to stab somebody with. Because that's a good time. Now we're essentially going to do the same thing. But now we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange. When it comes to the little inset areas, we're just going to fill those essentially. If it's a larger area, you want to stick to the center of wherever the glow is going to be. For these little ones. Get my paintbrush going. These little little areas right here, you can just decorate it right in there. We do want to push the orange a little bit. We don't want to keep this just a red because the rest of the model is red. And even though this is a very bright red, it's not going to stand out very well. So we're really going to go for the orange color on this. And we're just going to go around and do all that. We're going to do something a little differently when it comes to the sword, but I'll check back in with you guys in a second because this is going to require me to bring the model a little closer to my face. All right, and there's our oranges. Orange, the Troll Slayer Orange is a very thin paint. It's a layer paint, so as long as you can get it over that real rich red that we did earlier, it comes into this beautiful glowy effect. If you miss the spot, just go back in with the red paint, mark over it, and then go back and do the orange thing. If you do the orange straight over this dark material, it's going to look very desaturated and kind of dull. Now for his weapon, we're going to do a bit of a glow effect. So we're cheating a little bit in these little vents and spots because normally the orange would be at the hottest part of it or the hotter part of it than the red. Uh, these are very small little ports views into an engine, so they're just all orange. 
when we're looking at the sword here, or the spear, we gotta think about what is, where is the heat coming from when we're gonna make this thing glow. If it's coming from some apparatus in here, you want the orange and the yellow to be at the base, and then the, the blade is cooler at the front. If you're doing like a power sword or something that's wrapped in an energy field, energy field or magic or whatever, you may want to do it along the edges where it's sort of forming up the energy there. But for this one, I think we're going to focus it more towards here, more towards the base of the weapon. But I'm also I'm kind of thinking we might do some real quick and dirty OSL, a little bit of a glow here just for effect. Uh, I don't magnetize these things. If you do magnetize your weapons, please don't do OSL because then it's going to look stupid if you take the thing away. But we're going to do in support of that objective is we're going to take our orange and we're just going to start here at the back. Put orange here and then start to pull it up this way, like so. And since we are planning to do a little bit of OSL here, a little bit of glow, we know we've got three colors we're working with. We've got our red, orange, and our yellow. So our red's already down as the base coat. Now we're doing the orange. You know it gets serious because I stopped talking for a minute. We're just going to pull that up this way. So that makes the orange our mid-tone color. So when we're doing glow effects, we're going to typically use the mid-tone color to do that. We know the yellow or the orange-yellow mixture is going to be our highlight. We don't want the highlight of the weapon to be the same as the glow because the light that it's casting needs to be darker or duller than the, the source of light itself. So when you're playing around with your mid-tones, like so, got to keep looking at the camera to make sure you guys can see this. We're just going to do that. We're going to need nice thin layers, and then it just sort of peters off up here. So make sure it's smooth, but that's probably all we're doing for the front of the blade. So build up some more back here. Take a bit of time to focus on this, and we'll check back with you guys in a minute. Alright, paint's still trying, but this is now an exceedingly orange blade, which is kind of what it should be. It's supposed to be very hot. So before we add the yellow, we're going to just uh, throw a little glow effect in here for funsies. This is not part of the official tutorial. If you want uh, good OSL tutorials, you do not need to be on my channel. You need to be on someone else's channel. But anyways, all we're going to do is we're just going to take our mid-tone color, the orange. We're just essentially going to splash it on surfaces that face the direction of the glowing blade. So. Uh, it's very much like a dry brush. We're just going to, again, this is a very quick and dirty method. We're just going to splash the orange up around here. So I'm going to put a highlight on some of these surfaces that face the sword. Like so. We're not doing a very big glow. I want to I cast it up here onto the machinery, and I want to cast it onto his face a little bit. So our sphere of light is maybe that maybe that big not very big let me switch brushes i'm just going to get out my faithful little wedge kind of more flat brush where's my camera there it is it's a little flat brush for typically used for things like dry brushing and we're basically just going to dry brush backwards from where the sword glow is Get plenty of that off there. So I got my dry brush. I'm going to pull from the sword back onto the machinery. And start to give it that orange look to it. Again, we're dealing with a very thin paint in the context of Trollsire Orange. So it is going to take a few tries. Importantly, we're not trying to paint it orange. We're trying to tint it orange. Same thing down below. So we can do that a few more times. You can kind of see there where it's starting to, starting to gather up. What that should do is the hard edges that are facing the blade should catch the most of the orange, which is rightful. That's where the reflection is. The rest of it should end up with this funny little orange tint as the light is reflected around all these little lines and doodads and stuff. That's good right there. 
right about there. We'll do a little bit more once I can pull the thing closer to my face. We're also gonna come in here, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're just gonna glow up a little bit here uh, along his face. Very gentle because he's farther away from the light source, but we still wanna give it that effect. So I'm gonna try to start it without bringing the model out of camera focus and up to my eyes. We'll see how I do. So the same type of thing. You wanna take from, from the light source and move away. So we're just gonna start right there. Just really gently dry brush. Very, very little paint under the jaw too. just to give it that glow. All right, so we'll do a little bit more here and I will work on the face a little bit. There we go, that's a good start. We're just gonna take that idea and run with it. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. Again, just a very simple effect. I don't wanna to spend too much time working on this. We'll be right back. And there we go, we got the glow, we just kind of Again, real soft dry brush around this side of his face, focusing around the eye, the jaw, where it's right there next to the, uh, the blade. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera. Yeah, it's not bad. It still looks a little weird right now, and that's mostly because the item that's glowing is now the same shade as what we're, we're trying to decorate it with. So we're going to fix that. We're going to do about a eh, probably 50-50 mix of our Trolls Hair Orange and Flash Kids Yellow. Flash Kids Yellow by itself, I think is kind of a greenish yellow. It's got maybe that little tint to it, but it is much like Trolls Hair Orange. It is a very, very thin paint, so it's difficult to get the coverage you're looking for all the time. So we're just gonna mix these together, and we're gonna start with the sword this time, because that's the easiest one to point out. Using a dry brush thing, and we're just gonna pull from the back forward just kind of coax that glow out of there. Much better. We are gonna do the same thing in all these little crevices, but it's gonna be a lot harder for you guys to see that just because of the camera and everything. But now that we're bringing this up to a brighter thing, you can kind of see the glow that's already on the weapon starts to look a bit more natural. I say natural, I'm holding a, a 3D printed model of an armored war machine. So, you know, natural is a relative term. Yeah, it's pretty good. So again, we're not gonna brighten up the glow on the face because it's supposed to be orange while the, the yellow sword is going to read as brighter and hotter. So the orange that we put on the sword mechanism and on the face should read as just a duller glow. If you need to, go in and clean up a little bit with just Troll Slayer Orange. You might do that in our final step. For now though, I'm gonna to finish t touching up this thing a little bit. Gonna go put the yellow in, just a little bit of it, this yellow-orange mix into all the little, little vents and stuff, and we'll be right back. And just like that, we are pretty much done with this model. There's one thing I'm gonna point out before I call it completely done. If you need to patch up anywhere on the armor, just little areas like, see it overflowed on a couple of these little Little vents here, got some orange and yellow on them. Easiest way to do that, as long as it's a small one, is gently go over it with some Rhinox Hide. Again, it's a base color, so it's gonna have to black out that thing. And then gently with a little bit of Doom Bowl Brown. So we brought, we've done a whole bunch of different colors in this theme, but we've brought them all down to a brown tone. Doom Bowl should be able to help you cover up stuff without too much of a mess. If it's a large area, you're gonna have a bit more problem. You're gonna to wanna to go up through the paints again, very carefully in that area, and then just do a very tactical kind of a ink wash. But that is, hope you guys enjoyed. That is our tutorial on how to paint the Orgoth armor in this Light Warjack the Jackal. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, drop in the comments below. Let us know what you thought. Let us know what you plan to do with your models. And we will see you guys next time on War Budgies.